one in six Americans is over the age of 65. And by 2030, every baby boomer will be at that age. Geriatric pharmacy, what's it all about? Is it something that you should consider for your pharmacy career path? Well, if you have these questions, we'll be talking about them in this video. Hey there, I'm Alex. I'm the founder of the Happy PharmD and all things career paths expert in pharmacy. We've helped now in our company over 2,500 pharmacists get into career paths and geriatric pharmacy is one of them. Don't worry, I promise to dispense tons of knowledge in this video and maybe a few bad puns. Whether you're fresh out of school or you're getting into a new career path, don't worry, we got you covered because we're going to be talking about salary, job satisfaction, job demand, and the flexibility of being this kind of pharmacist. Like a brand new senior citizen who just got their first senior discount, let's get started. So what is geriatric pharmacy? Well, it's not typically a normal field. It's something that blends in with things like hospice, long-term care, but it's generally providing care over, sources vary, over 65 years of age. Typically, these pharmacists are doing chronic care medication therapy management on anything from mental health to cancer to long-term care problems like heck, just cardiac health and, and weight issues. From 1988 to 2010, the number of prescriptions for people over the age of 65 doubled. And that number has only continued to grow over the last few years. Given this polypharmacy issue, geriatric pharmacists are well-versed in polypharmacy solutions, i.e. either maintaining doses, decreasing them, or trying other solutions to help people maintain their health in their waxing years. Typically, pharmacists who practice in these settings don't call themselves geriatric pharmacists. It makes them sound old. They are normally practicing in hospitals, long-term care facilities, outpatient uh, assisted living centers, housing communities, sometimes federally qualified health centers. When I was in ambulatory care, my average patient was around 62 years old. This area of medicine is kind of, it's a blend. It's a mixture of a lot of different things and you can practice in a lot of different settings. So it's kind of unique. If you were to consider all the different places where you could practice, the number of people in these settings is in the tens of thousands. However, if you looked at the Board of Specialty Pharmacies, they report that there's approximately 4,600 board certified geriatric pharmacists. Becoming a geriatric pharmacist is something that can be relatively easy or hard depending on what sector you want to work in. We've helped plenty of pharmacists transition from retail or hospital right into long-term care while others want to do things like getting a PGY-1 and even PGY-2 in certain sectors. If you'd like to get specialized or certified, there's a list of criteria that you can do in order to get that, that require typically years of experience, but you don't need that certification in order to get into this field. Typically, these positions are things like geriatric pharmacist, geriatric clinical pharmacist, and long-term care pharmacist. So how much can you make in this field? Let's talk about salary. Data is going to vary here, and it's a little bit all over the place. As you could look up information about clinical pharmacists within long-term care settings, you could look up geriatric consultant pharmacist, and you're going to get a lot of different answers. What we did was we narrowed down what does the certification get on payscale.com, and we found that the annual average was 129. This is honestly disappointing. It's continuing this theme in this clinical pharmacy practice series where you could go get a job in a retail chain setting and get paid more or about the same as someone who is certified and has years of training in a residency. This is a ding against salary and it makes me honestly frustrated. Like physicians get paid more for every specialty that they're in practically compared to family medicine. And so we value specialty and yet in pharmacy, not so much. I mean, you can get paid more in most major urban areas as a retail chain pharmacist than you would get paid to do all of this training to work in one of these niches. According to ZipRecruiter, the average annual salary is 120, with it ranging in different sectors, New York and California being some of the higher places on this list that you can be paid. Okay, so at the end of the day, you're not going to get paid anymore to go into this field in comparison to the other fields. 
but still six figures is a nice starting salary. So for these reasons, I'm gonna give the salary score a five out of 10. Do geriatric pharmacists find it a joy in serving this patient population? Well, you may be surprised to see that actually quite a few people say so. One study found that 38% said they were extremely satisfied in helping out in this patient population. That's really high. In comparison to other satisfaction scores, you'd see that percentage maybe around 10 to 15%. I'm reminded of one of my mentors from college, uh, Dr. Jeff Bates, who is now a dean of a college of pharmacy. And I remember him talking about how much joy he had when helping in a long-term care facility. Hearing him talk about his interactions with people really made me feel like I could see myself doing that. I could see myself making a difference and enjoying helping others in that setting. But it's not all rose-colored glasses. In that same study that I mentioned, they reported that the workload, long hours, and paperwork were some of the most concerning and dissatisfying aspects of the role. But what do people say about it in the field? Well, we checked out Reddit and we found a few people commenting that in comparison to retail, it is way better than standing all day. I don't know if that's the best comparison because when, when people move out of retail and into some of these other settings, it's like they think about the negatives versus the positives. But honestly, most pharmacists are in retail, so I get it, it makes sense. As one pharmacist said, I like it better than retail since I'm not standing all day. <laughs> like, that's the bar. Do you have to stand all day? How sad is it that that is the standard for pharmacy? Like, do you have to stand all day? Yes or no? If it's a yes, not good. No, not so much. I don't know of another healthcare profession that's, you know, measured by that. Practically everyone else gets to sit. It's not fair. After all, retail doesn't even have to like, there's no reason really for why you're standing anymore. One pharmacist said it's a thousand percent better than retail. And another one said long-term care is the chillest work environment. We normally like to look at Glassdoor, but because geriatric pharmacy is a blend of different settings, I didn't think it really appropriate to measure that. But we do have a few examples from our podcast of pharmacists that we've helped move into long-term care facilities. Check out this one with Sam Ann, who went from retail into clinical consulting and then has now actually started up his own business in that space. Or check out Yvonne's story where she went from retail to long-term care. Considering these factors and that there's not a whole lot of reports of burnout, I'm actually gonna give geriatric pharmacy an eight out of 10 because most people are saying it's more relaxed. Yes, it still can be stressful. Yes, there's workload problems, but overall it seems to be a field that if for the right person, it's a great fit. So it's a solid eight out of 10. Now let's talk about job demand. Now, overall, I want you to know that the demographics plays a role here. Right now, you're if you're watching this in the next five to 10 years, you're experiencing a huge boom in senior care. We have known for a long time that this generation that's going into seniorhood, the boomers, they will be one of the larger generations, but that number will be dying down. You can expect that over the next 10, 20 years, the demand to not be as high as, sorry to say it, seniors will be moving on into the next part of life. I'm just kind of sad. If you still have grandparents, please tell them that you love them. We have one life to live, guys. But on a lighter note, how demand are these jobs? Well, by taking a look at Indeed here, we found around over 2,300 jobs available and 82% of them are entry-level positions. 23,000 is a decent number on Indeed, but when you compare it to community pharmacy, you're looking at a comparison of like to 30, 40,000 available jobs. On ZipRecruiter though, we only found about 300 jobs available. And these jobs are proving to have some demand. Uh, we found a few sign-on bonuses like this one, dispensing pharmacists for long-term care, which I would take this definitely more of like a community pharmacy role or a hospital staff position, but they had a sign-on bonus of $40,000. The sign-on bonus may be there because I think they're having a hard time attracting pharmacists uh, to that brand for reasons we're not talking about in this episode. So because of these reasons, because I see that the immediate demand over the next 10, 20, maybe 25 years even, will we have an increased uh, level of demand, I'm gonna give the score a seven out of 10. Now let's talk about flexibility, the magic factor of this position. 
Do geriatric pharmacists have the flexibility of a yoga instructor in San Juan, Mexico? Why San Juan? I don't know. But do they? Do they have a flexible position? Well, I think that they do. When you look at the typical pharmacist working in long-term care or some of these clinical settings, it's the typical Monday through Friday schedule. Nine to five, that's nice for pharmacists. On top of that, long-term care has been accepting remote positions more than some of the other clinical specialties like cardiology or infectious disease. And you know your boy here loves a remote job. Who doesn't? Living out of your home? Never having to see people ever again? What a dream. One of the other nice perks is that in healthy healthcare environments where people know how to communicate and handle conflict, People talk about the perk of working with other professionals. And in the right settings, people don't typically feel as rushed or pushed, say, in the community pharmacy setting or in the hospital setting. Because geriatric pharmacy encompasses a wide variety of a patient population, like you can get into hospitals, you can get in community, specialty, academic institutions, you can even get into pharma. And so for these reasons, I think it's quite easy for you to transition into other fields. Now, I'm gonna give a flexibility score, a bold score, but I'm gonna call it an eight out of 10. And now it's time for the final score. So for salary, I gave it a five out of 10 because it's a great salary, but in the end, you're not gonna get paid more than your retail or hospital brethren. For satisfaction, I gave it an eight out of 10, as there's lots of data out there that says that these pharmacists are very engaged by their work while still having some stress and workload issues. For demand, I said it's seven out of 10 because sign-on bonuses for some positions seem to be back. There's a decent amount of jobs available. And overall, we know that over the next 10 to 25 years, the demand for uh, boomer care <laughs> is gonna be high. And for flexibility, I said eight out of 10 because these jobs are often nine to five, Monday through Friday. Flexibility is there. You can get into lots of different sectors of the healthcare system from long-term care to specialty. So the final score is, drum roll, seven out of 10. A solid score for a career field that is growing for the next few decades and will probably continue to grow after that. Geriatric pharmacy is often a focus of a lot of medicine. After all, it is our geriatrics of the world that are taking the majority of the medicine. If you just think about the curriculum that you've gone through for pharmacy school, I mean, the majority of the medicines are for old people. So a lot of our education is centered around this field. It's a great career practice, I think, for a lot of different people. Yes, it has its downsides, its pros, its cons, and we went through those, but Overall, I feel pretty happy recommending people get into this career path. Thanks for joining me on this venture. Was there something that I didn't cover or sorely miss? There's so much information here that it does make it a little bit difficult to like boil down what do you need to know, but I would love your feedback or your comments. Did I miss something? Would Should I have added something? Please let me know. Thank you for watching this video. And until I see you in the next career path video, take care.